So now, uh, aided by, or hopefully aided by the computer and um, your participation, we're going to do a little experiment. So if you go back to the QM Plus web page and open in under lecture five, it's, there's a file called population data. It might be quite large, so I'm not sure how long it will take to open. It may open instantaneously. If you open that up, that should have two, I think, 200,000 um, samples in it. I've decided that that's the size now of the military person, all military personnel. And if you remember previously, I showed you how to take a random sample. We go to the data menu, and at the bottom of the data menu, we have a select cases. If you click on that, Um, then halfway down, there's this option that says random sample of cases. If you click on that one, then the sample button, button lights up. You can click on it. If we take exactly 400, so uh, from the first, if you put in 200,000, so 200 followed by, well, 2 followed by 5 zeros, as if you didn't know what 200,000 looked like. I will probably get this wrong, so that's really for my benefit. Oh, I've forgotten the, already I've forgotten how many I've put in. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so you should have 400 cases from the first 200,000. There's only 200,000 in the file. So. So it's just saying I'm going to randomly choose 400 from all, all everything in the file. You press OK or continue, and then press OK. You should have a file that looks like this, and you should have lots and lots of um, things crossed out. So you've got your data file. It, it, it looks like this. And go to select cases. Even if you've done this, can you do it again? So you select on, click on select cases. Then select random sample of cases, which may already be selected. Then press sample. And here. I originally we put in 400 from the first 200,000. I'm going to suggest we drop that down to 200. So you should have it look like this. So I've got a random sample of cases, sample 200 from the first 200,000 cases. We've got that, and then if you press OK, and it should take, the, take those samples. Now, to analyze, we're going to go to analyze. You've got that analyze menu that has become our friend over the last five weeks. We get to compare means, and then the third option down is independent sample t test. I'll just show you that again in case anyone missed it. So it was analyze, compare means. Independent samples, t test, and then as before, we're going to put weight. So it's a scale weight because we want all of the weight variables. We're going to put those into the test variable because that's the thing we're testing. We want to see is there a change in the weight, and we want to test that change between two groups 
And those groups are defined by the Republic or Imperial uh, grouping variable. It's nominal, you see it's nominal, a little um, Venn diagram. Press the arrow, put it in grouping variable. And define the groups as zero, zero, and one. And then you press continue. So you should have a box that looks something like that. And then when you press OK, you'll get some output. But if you go back to the data menu and select cases, and you've got this to select a random sample, I believe that even if, if you don't press anything, if you just press OK, it will generate another random sample. We'll try this just to convince ourselves that it actually does work as, as it did when I tried it. So it now should have selected a different set of data. So long as you have been through that process of telling it to select uh, 200 random samples. So if you've already managed to generate this, you should have just, done this, um, you should have just pressed OK. And then if you go back uh, to the bot, to the window, the population file, and we go analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test. So exactly what we did before. All the data should be there as it was, so you can just press OK. And you should have got different values. So some of you, hopefully, you, if you're on the same random number as I am, you'll have probably exactly the same result as me, which if you look, the, the one I want you to look at is, remember last time, I just in the last sample, random sample of 200 individuals, I showed a statistically significant difference between those sample means. And the p-value was about 0.02. I've just done exactly the same on exactly the same set of data. All, the only thing that changed is the samples, the people or the individuals contributing to my samples. And now, my significance is 0.61. I have to accept the null hypothesis. There is no difference between these. Is that confusing or what? But this is how it works. And this is, this is the tool, these are the tools that we have to work with. And this is why it's really very important not to pin too much on p-values. Um, because the p-value itself has its own distribution. And so if we did it enough times, you'd see that that follows probably an approximately normal distribution. And it has a mean that is the most likely one value that you'll get. But sometimes you'll get some larger or smaller values. I want you, if we repeat it one more time. So again, you can just go back to go back to the data file. So the way to repeat it, you go back to that data menu, select cases, just press OK, and it will select the next random sample. And then you go back to your data window, analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test, just press OK because all the data is there. And now I get a significance of 0.095. I'm um, accepting the null hypothesis because I'm saying this is not a statistically significant difference in this sample. Although, I'm inclined to look at my data and say, well, when I've looked at my, the distribution of my data, this is a small p-value. This would encourage me, perhaps, to repeat this experiment or repeat it with a larger sample size. And the reason you would want to repeat the sample size is that that will reduce the variation 
in the p-value, amongst other things. And so we can, we, we can do this. So if we up the sample size, um, if you go back to your data window, going back to data, select cases. Now where it says random sample of cases, and we've got 200 from the first 200,000. Now let's change that back to 400. So if you select 400 cases from the first 200,000, and then if you press OK, now it will have just randomly chosen four, uh, 400. Make sure you're in the data window. You can go to Analyze, Compare Means, Independent Samples T-Test. The same as we've done before. Just press OK because everything's in there. We don't want to change anything. And so now I've got my significance is 0 0.001. So I'm saying it's 0.1%. I'm saying I've got a significant difference, statistically significant difference, very small p-value. Reject the null hypothesis. What happens if we repeat this? We won't get the same p-value. I can't tell you what it will be. So, okay, I've got a p-value of 0 0.001. So that is much less than my significance level, which I chose as 5% or 0 0.05. Therefore, I reject the null hypothesis. I'm saying there is a 0.1% chance that the mean difference, the difference in these means, difference in these means is a 0.1% chance that the difference in these means could occur from a single distribution. Therefore, I'm forced to believe that there are m m is more than one distribution. You're saying that's a significant difference. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference. So if I say there is a significant difference, I'm saying that there is a difference. So I'm rejecting the idea of there being no difference. Okay, so what has been said is that so we can't reject or accept the, um, the null hypothesis by taking a random sample. Well, you can, but that is just something that we have to live with in our experiments, that there is variation. And just because we get a result in one experiment doesn't mean that someone else could generate, would not generate a different result from us. And this ties into the idea of power. So when you do a power calculation, you're defining at the outset of your study the probability that you're actually going to get it right. That's what you're defining. You're saying, okay, what's the probability that my study is going to get it right? And actually, this, there's a sort of standard of setting that value at 80%, which means that 20% of the time you're going to get it wrong. You can think of power as correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. I'd encourage you also to read um, something on, on the subject because it is a reasonably important concept, even just in the argument about which tests to use, because certain tests are reported to have higher power than others, so you kind of need to at least have an appreciation of what, that's, what that means. So having thrown everything up in the air and, and basically said, look, don't believe any of this statistics nonsense, just use common sense. Well, I would say com combine common sense with statistics. Increasing the sample size will always uh, improve the reliability of the p-value or, or reduce the variation in the p-value. And that's why people do these sample size calculations, because that will tell you they, then you can estimate the probability that your p-value is actually accurate. If you use 400 samples as opposed to 200, you'll get less variation in that p-value. 